Welcome to LTD Forge. Thank you for coming back and being patient with my absence. Um, unfortunately, I still am not at 100% to work in the shop. So I got some old videos that I found in my cloud and I've been putting them together and doing a voiceover so that I still have content to put out there. Don't worry, I have a lot of content. Um, I did have to go through and scrub a few things out, but in this video, we'll be doing a chef knife in the Santuco style with a Western handle, so it'll be full tang. Um, and thank you for watching. Be sure to leave a comment below or to any suggestions on any future videos. Thank you, have a great time. Hey out there YouTube world. Uh, like I said, these are a bunch of videos that I used to have because I'm still not at 100% so I can't exactly um, stand all day. So these are from previous knives that I, I made and filmed and I'm going ahead and just reorganize them and uh, doing the voiceover on it. Okay, today I'm putting together a Santuco style chef knife with a western handle so it's going to be a full tang. and. I'm cutting it out there. Everything's going really, really well for me. You'll see a lot of my new equipment in here. Uh, I got it just before the summer, and uh, yeah, it's coming together really well. I love this wheel because um, I'm able to uh, knock off all the big stuff and the burrs before wasting it on my belts and almost ruining those. But like I said, it goes quick and it's a really pleasure to work with. I'm putting in the finger wells just for placement and then I take it over to the sander and I get the uh, uh, finger well on the front put in. See, I'm putting on a tip. See, I, I keep measuring up the uh, rocker portion on it and it's just not, right now it's just a straight edge. But um, when I use the chef knives and my, other Santucos that I paid well over a couple hundred dollars for, they always had a comfortable rocker on it. So you can sit it on the back and the front tip is still up. So I'm continuing that tradition on these knives here. And this is a uh, ceramic 40 grit belt. So it does a lot of hogging off the metal really quick. So you gotta be careful because I have ruined a few of my projects not expecting what these uh, ceramic belts can do, but they are just phenomenal. I always suggest go ahead and as you're developing your uh, work here keep holding in your hand like you would an actual knife and see if, how comfortable it is for you Because if it's comfort for you, it'll most likely be nice and comfortable for somebody else um, I always test the grip on it see if it's fitting right and Yeah, I just use a paint pen to draw my center lines here and they've always done really good for me I think I did this back in June the beginning of June and um, before it got really hot, I was able to put out knives for two, three days. Really high quality ones too. If you notice, my uh, platter right there in the back is only an inch and a half tall. I have a couple different ones I like to swap in and out for certain projects. Later on, I'm gonna put my uh, uh, full one on. I think it's five and a quarter inches and it's uh, bowed. Yeah. Now here's a technique that I've been using for a while. It's great, you put a piece of tape on both ends and um, you glue them together and it keeps your uh, scales together so you can drill them, but obviously, some time between now and last or June, 
I erased the drill footage, so I didn't put that on there, but yeah, I just taped it all together on top of each other and drilled through the uh, knife handle through the scales so they all matched up. And uh, this is really important right here because um, I have messed this up several times before. I have to write the L and R on it so you know which, and I do it based on holding the knife in my hand. Some people do it backwards and I don't know why, but whatever works for you, I guess. And here again, uh, I'm taking my handle material and hogging off as much weight as I can before I start putting them on the sanders because I don't want to, you know, waste my belts. Yeah, the more tools you have available to make your job a lot easier and save money, that is the name of the game because it'll all be profit after that. But anyway. I had to switch to the bigger sander because uh, sander, because this is a uh, red oak. I think it's red oak, and uh, it is tough to move. So I had to uh, bust out my uh, ceramic belts on the, my uh, four by thirty six, and because uh, it just the the one by thirty was not cutting it. It's just too thin, and I do a lot of my uh, bigger work on here in case I you know so I don't burn up the one by thirty. See all the burn marks on there? It's just, it was hell. But I hogged through it. See, I'm doing this handle right, and I can tell I'm doing it right, so I must have watched a video prior to this on how to do handles, because I've always had issues with handles. And the, the trick is, and I need to learn this with my Damascus, to get that handle shape the best you can, so when you put it on the actual knife itself, you don't have to go to the grinder as much. I mean, just a little fine tuning here and there, maybe rotary tool, you know, just get the important areas. But in my other knives, this is one of my biggest issues is I, I don't know why. Some days I have it, some days I don't. Well, after I put it on the handle, I still have so much material and it keeps wiping away that pattern down the spine of the, uh, in the handle area where you can't see the Damascus pattern. So I have to get a Q-tip and slowly apply the uh, ferric chloride on each side or tape it up and re-dip it. But there's always a chance you ruin the handle that way. So it looks like on this time, I'm really paying a lot of detail to this uh, handle, which will pay off in the end. You know, work hard at first, so it's easier in the end. This is the part everybody hates. Inevitably, you're going to have to hand sand unless you got... Um, 2x72 with all the different attachments, the big wheel, the small rollers and stuff like that in order to put a, a more even cut on it. Because I notice I do have a lot of scratches on there from my 80 and 120 belt. So I'm using a, um, a 220 grit right now and it, it all works out. It, it, I'm getting off the uh, edges. Yeah, see I'm paying a lot of attention to the um, the tip there because there was a there's a couple gashes that go sideways just from sanding it must have skipped on the sander yep and here we go i'm doing a hammer pattern on it so i got the ball ping hammer out and i am uh, just putting my nice little devil's ball over it i really like this i've done this a couple times and i think this one might have been my first one i don't remember and here we go the flash All right, put it in the toaster oven for 400 degrees for two hours to get it nice and tempered. 